Okay, for this section, there's nothing particularly new. We're just going to be bringing together uh, all the techniques that we know to bear down on some particularly interesting integrals. Um, so we're going to just go through a bunch of examples and talk about how we might approach the problems and what tells us that we might approach a problem a certain way. And for each of the examples in this problem, I encourage you to pause the video before I start talking about the technique we're going to use to see if you can get started on it or to see if you have a sense of what technique we might apply. So let's look at our first example. Now most of the examples in this section are going to involve more than one direct strategy. For instance, we might do a u substitution followed by integration by parts, or we might be doing an integration by parts where going from dv to v requires some major move like trigonometric substitution or partial fraction decomposition. So th again, the point of this section is just to practice organizing our thoughts and being able to use what we know in order to work out some pretty gnarly integrals. So looking at this one, obviously there's no function whose derivative is immediately that that we can see, so we're going to need to do some, some kind of technique. Um, this x of the fourth in the denominator is very telling. We have a perfect square plus 3. It's just that what's being squared, it happens to be x squared. In other words, um, I'm looking at this x to the fourth and thinking of it as like x squared squared. So if we were to do the u substitution where we let u equal x squared, then we would have eventually at this point a u squared plus 3 in the denominator. And we know that that's the form for which a trigonometric substitution would be helpful. So if we can get this substitution to work, then we might be able to finish this integral using a trigonometric substitution. So if we let u equal x squared, then du is 2x dx, and we have an x dx in our integral, so that's just du over 2. So this becomes, well, our x to the fourth plus 3 in the denominator becomes simply u squared plus 3, and x dx becomes du over 2. Okay, well we can factor the 1 half out, so we get du over u squared plus 3. And yeah, that was a successful transformation, because looking at what our integral is now, we can totally handle that with a trigonometric substitution. Um, let's do that, but I want to point out that we're not actually going to finish every integral in this lecture. The, the point of this lecture is to talk about strategies and techniques overall, and the idea is, is that once we get it to a point where we can easily finish it, we're going to probably just stop. So, however, here we would let u equal rad 3 tangent theta, so du is equal to rad 3 secant squared theta d theta. So our integral then becomes 1 half, and our du is rad 3 secant squared theta d theta, and our u squared plus 3 becomes the square of rad 3 tan theta, so that would be 3 tangent squared theta plus 3. Okay, so we can factor a rad 3 over 3 out of this, giving us secant squared theta over tangent squared theta plus 1 d theta. Ah, wonderful. That whole thing right there is just 1, right? Secant squared over secant squared. So this is in fact the integral of rad 3 over 6 d theta which is rad 3 over 6 theta plus a constant. And now all we have to do is roll our thetas backward until we're back in terms of x. We have several layers of substitutions to go back to. For instance, we can see that according to this definition right here, 
that theta is equal to inverse tangent of u over rad 3. So this is rad 3 over 6 times inverse tangent of u over rad 3 plus a constant. Ah, but u is equal to x squared. So that's our last replacement. Rad 3 over 6 inverse tangent of x squared over rad 3 plus a constant. And we're done. All right, here's another one that I encourage you to pause and think about before unpausing. So always look for that u substitution as that's probably the easiest way to handle an integral that's complicated. However, there's no obvious u substitution here. There would be if this internal x here were squared, then we could let u equal x squared, du would be 2x dx, and, and this would simply reduce to uh, sine squared of u, du, and I think there might be like a one-half factor somewhere floating around, uh, and we know how to handle that integral. Uh, so point being, always look for that u substitution. Um, there isn't an obvious u substitution here, so we have the product of two unrelated functions. We have like an algebraic function multiplied by a trigonometric function, and that suggests the use of integration by parts. So yeah, let's do that. According to Lie 8, we should let our u equal the algebraic part, not the trigonometric part, so we'll let u equal x. So this step right here, going from dv to v, is in fact exactly why this is an interesting problem, because this is not an obvious integral itself. Uh, we do have dv, we need to go to v, and our dv is sine squared. So as side work, we should evaluate sine squared x dx. Okay, well, we know how to do that. There's a prescription for this one. It's simply to use this identity right away because of section 7.2. And we get 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2x. This is distributing the 1 half. We can now integrate each of these pieces. So we get 1 half x minus 1 over 4 sine of 2x plus our constant. And that whole thing, although we don't need the constant, is going to be our v. So we can just paste that guy right up here and now continue the main thread of working out the integration by parts. Okay, so continuing, we have the original integral here which unwraps to ultraviolet voodoo. And u times v would be 1 half x squared minus x over 4 sine 2x. And that itself is minus the integral of v du. So v is 1 half x minus 1 fourth sine 2x. And du is just dx. So, of course, we just have to work out this integral right here. And fortunately, each of the terms we can integrate immediately. So we'll get minus 1 fourth x squared. And then we have a minus and another minus. So that'll be a plus, except sine itself integrates to negative cosine. So we're back to a negative here. 1 over 8 cosine of 2x and that was our last integral so we'll throw in our constant here. Uh, there's a tiny bit of simplification. These two terms here combine so we get 1 half minus 1 fourth is of course 1 fourth x squared. And there's our final answer. So yeah what made this one interesting was that Simply in the middle of integration by parts, we went from dv to v as usual, but that integral itself uh, was not at all trivial. So there we are. All right, here's an interesting looking one. 
Um, in this case, we have x plus e to the x, which is all in the exponent of e, right? So this is e raised to the x plus e to the x. So uh, this is an example of one where just a weird manipulation is needed, um, followed by once you see the weird manipulation, then it's actually a really straightforward use substitution. So pause the video, see if you can figure out the little weird manipulation, and... Uh, and now let's take a look. So the weird manipulation is just noting that uh, e to the a plus b is e to the a times e to the b. It's an old fashioned algebraic move from the early days. So if we apply that here, we have e to the uh, first thing plus second thing is equal to e to the first thing times e to the second thing and now, if you let u equal e to the x, we require an e to the x dx in our integral, which we have. So this is just e to the u du, which integrates immediately to e to the u plus c. Ah, but u is e to the x, so this is just e to the e to the x plus a constant, and we're done. So this was simply an example of one where, yeah, sometimes you need to just play around with the form of the integral to get it to uh, something that you can work with. Okay, for this example, we definitely have the product of two unrelated function types, algebraic and exponential. Uh, but before we consider integration by parts, we should try a substitution because we have that exponential is of stuff. So in particular, if we let u equal negative x cubed, the derivative of that is some constant times x squared, right? So we would need an x squared dx, which we do have in the x to the fifth, right? x to the fifth is like x cubed times x squared. So the x squared factor of that would get consumed in become part of the du. That would leave us with an x cubed that's unaccounted for, ah, but no problem because we let u equal negative x cubed so we can convert that back into terms of u. And there we are. So path to victory, right? So let's just see what that would look like, but we're probably not gonna finish this whole integral. We're just gonna get it to a point where we're satisfied that it can be managed um, using just a more elementary technique. So we're gonna let u equal negative x cubed and du will be negative three x squared dx. So our integral here, x to the fifth times e to the negative x cubed dx. Now let's pretend like we didn't talk about how it's gonna work out perfectly. And let's say we're still tentative about our substitution. So we're gonna go into this factor by factor as carefully as we can. So the first thing we encounter is this x to the fifth. And in our substitution, we don't see a direct x to the fifth. So let's leave that one alone for just a moment and move right along. We now have e raised to the negative x cubed. Ah, well, negative x cubed is part of our substitution, so that's specifically u, right? Uh, the last factor we encounter is dx, and dx we can solve for, to be absolutely as careful as possible, is du over negative 3x squared. Okay, so that's du over negative 3x squared. So now we're not done our substitution, I've said this many times, until you have converted every single x variable one way or another into something involving u, right? There can't be any lingering unaccounted for x's. So we have an x to the fifth divided by x squared. That gives us x cubed, e to the u, and we still have our du and our negative three down here. So again, we're not quite done because we now have an x cubed that's unaccounted for, but we can go back and look at our main substitution and we can see, of course, that x cubed is simply negative u. 
So this is now going to be negative u times e to the u times du over negative 3. So as an integral, we can factor out 1 third, the negatives canceling, of course, giving us u e to the u du. And by section 7.5, Everyone should be looking at that integral and knowing immediately that integration by parts is the way to kill it and that it'll work. So I'm not going to finish this one. That is a classic integration by parts. Okay. Now, of course, you can't use the letter U anymore because it already has a purpose. So we would need to use integration by parts as W equals U and DW equals DU and dv would be our e to the u du, and v would equal e to the u, and so our integral would, instead of being ultraviolet voodoo, would be ultraviolet v dw, and you'd put all those pieces together And we're just so close to being done, but I'm not going to finish that one. So, of course, when you do get an answer, it'll be in terms of u. So you go back to the original, original substitution, and all the u's become negative x cubed. Okay, as usual, strongly encourage you to pause the video and give this one a shot on your own. So several approaches come to mind for me. Um, the thing that I want to try the most is letting u be 1 plus rad x. So we know its derivative is 1 over 2 rad x. And we don't have a 1 over 2 rad x. We have still an unaccounted for x factor here. However, we know we can write x easily in terms of u. And we might have to do that. So let's see what we have here. Our dx in the numerator is 2 rad x du, because dx is equal to 2 rad x du. This is all over an unaccounted for x at the moment. And 1 plus rad x, well, OK, that turned into u. So what to do with these rad x and x? Well, we know that the square root of x divided by x is, in fact, 1 over the square root of x. So this is 2 du over rad x times u. OK, well, this is promising because rad x is u minus 1. So we have 2 du over u minus 1 times u. OK. So looking at this form, again, based on the sections that we've gone through, hopefully every single person looking at this knows automatically how to proceed. This is a rational function. It should be treated as a partial fraction decomposition problem. So we would lift out the 2 over u minus 1 times u, and we would write it as a over u plus b over u minus 1. That denominator was conveniently already factored for us. And we would work out the coefficients a and b and simply integrate something over u, which becomes natural log of u, plus something over u minus 1, which becomes natural log of u minus 1. And we roll our substitutions backward, and we have victory. So I'm actually not going to finish this one. Again, because the most interesting part of this was right here at the beginning. After that, it's just pure mechanics. Uh, here's one that a former student emailed me about a couple years ago. Uh, she transferred to Berkeley, and it was on her engineering final. And this is a pretty good one. We need to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate which will manufacture a 1 squared minus sine squared, and that becomes, of course, cosine squared. So 
So that's really the sneaky move that's required. So again, the point of this one is really just to remind you that sometimes there's just sneaky algebra, right? So here we will say, well, this is like one over one plus sine x times one minus sine of x over one minus sine of x. So what we're gonna get is one minus sine of x all divided by one plus sine times one minus sine, which would be one minus sine squared of x. So of course the denominator is simply cosine squared of x. And now this integral splits into two terms. We have one over cosine squared, which is secant squared. Excellent, we know how to integrate that. Minus sine over cosine squared. And that second part, we could do a u substitution. We'll let u equal cosine and our du will be negative sine x dx. So this is this integral minus this integral. And for this guy, we said we're gonna let u equal cosine. So du is negative sine x dx. So of course over here, antiderivative of secant squared is tangent of x, and we are gonna get a plus du over u squared, because those negatives are gonna cancel. Okay, well the antiderivative of one over u squared is negative one over u. So this is tangent of x minus one over u plus a constant. And what is u? u is cosine. So this is simply tangent of x minus one over cosine of x. Uh, well, that's secant of x plus our constant. And we're done. All right, now this one requires a particular special trick. When you have an expression like this that's got a bunch of radicals in it and the radicals have different index, meaning this is an index two because it's a square root, and this is an index three because it's a cube root. Um, what you wanna do is you want to let x be a power of u. So we wanna let x be equal to some power of u, um, and we wanna choose a power so that when taking the square root or cube root or whatever, the radical is eliminated and you're left with just u or u to some positive power. Um, and the way we make this decision is by letting x equal u raised to the lowest common multiple of the radical indices. So we're going to choose six here because that's the lowest common multiple of two and three. Okay. So letting x equal u to the 6 means that dx is 6u to the 5 du. And let's go and see what happens to our integral at this point. So we have the square root of x. Well, that's like the square root of u to the 6. And we have 1 plus the cube root of x. Well, that's like the cube root of u to the 6. And our dx is 6u to the 5 du. Okay, well, because we chose the lowest common multiple, it means that each radical index is going to cut evenly into the power of six here. So the square root of u to the six will be u cubed because that's like u to the six over two. And the cube root of u to the six will be u squared because that's like u to the six over three. So we get u cubed divided by one plus u squared multiplied by 6u to the 5 du. Okay, well this is like 6 times the integral of u to the 8 over 1 plus u squared du. So we've transformed our integral into a new integral that we should 
put our minds at with, uh, uh, you know, new, fresh ideas? And what would you do if you had a rational expression like this? Well, we know rational expressions are either handled with partial fraction decomposition or long division. And in this case, if long division is appropriate because our numerator has a degree equal to or higher than the degree of the denominator. So we're home free here. We have a path to victory, right? We know to use long division. We know it's going to work. And when we're done, we just replace our u's with the sixth root of x. Now let's just carry this out. So we have u to the 8 and u squared plus 1. So u squared goes into the u to the 8, u to the 6 times. OK. And u squared goes into u to the 6, u to the 4 times, negative, of course. So we get negative u to the 6 minus u to the 4th. And performing that subtraction, we get a u to the 4 here. u squared goes in there u squared times. And finally, u squared goes into negative u squared, negative 1 times. So we have a remainder of 1. So this means that our integral is going to be 6 times the integral of the quotient u to the 6 minus u to the 4 plus u squared minus 1 plus the remainder, which is 1, all divided by the original divisor, which is 1 plus u squared. Okay, well, we can easily integrate each of those pieces. So this is u to the 7 over 7 minus u to the 5 over 5 plus u cubed over 3 minus u plus inverse tangent of u plus a constant. And we can distribute the 6 and remember that u is equal to x to the 1 over 6. So this is 6 over 7 x to the 7 over 6 minus 6 over 5 x to the 5 over 6 plus 6 over 3 which is 2 x to the 3 over 6 so that's a 1 half minus 6 x to the 1 6 plus inverse tangent of x to the 1 6 plus our constant and it's a weird looking answer, but it's the answer. So we win, because we're powerful calculus people. I would like to close this section with a couple of comments here. Uh, one is, by no means is the way we solved these problems the only way to approach these problems. Um, I tried to emphasize what your thought process kind of needs to be going through these, but by all means, I encourage experimentation. Um, even after you've solved a problem, I encourage a spirit of what if, what if, what if instead of letting u equal rad x plus one, we just let u equal rad x. And that probably would work in this case. For a question on an exam, there will always be a natural approach. So if you just follow your natural and practiced thought process, you will be able to produce the solution. That said, I encourage you to go into the exercises for section 7.5 with a nice open mind and expecting to be stumped a little bit and just to play around and, and just to have fun with them. You have the ability to solve every problem in section 7.5.